Welcome back. We are here now. We've got health expert Dr Megan Rossi and we've had loads of questions for you this morning. I think we should get straight to the phones, Megan. Lovely to see you. Uh, first up, we're going to be speaking to Lorraine. Morning, Lorraine. Lorraine, are you there? I think we're having a bit of trouble getting through to Lorraine. Lorraine, are you on the line? Joe, you know we're going to come back to Lorraine in a minute while we have a little uh, uh, moment there. Uh, Lorraine said, how can I turn my husband's diet around? Um, I'd really like some healthy diet tips for my husband. He eats a lot of spicy food and processed foods, and we want to get his gut health boosted as quickly as possible. What's the best thing to address first to get the ball rolling? But you're certainly not alone, Lorraine. Mm. <laughs> I had to go through that with my husband. <laughs> so I think one of the key things is to find out how on board your husband is. If he's not very kind of keen to change his diet, one of the key tips to really make changes is to start to sneak in extra plants, OK? I know we have the to do this. The sabotage of the food on the sly. Exactly. So things like if you're having bolognese for dinner, add in a can of mixed beans. They won't even know that they're in there or blend in some mushrooms because we know the one thing our gut bacteria really love to really support your gut health is the plants. Mm. And then specifically, there is these six different categories and they're called the super six. So people who have the super six in their diet each and every day seem to have better gut health than those who kind of miss one of the groups because these super six kind of act, act like fertilizer for those good gut bacteria. And there's a lot of people, isn't there, Joe? So I'm very fussy when it comes down to food. I'm like, oh, it's got mushrooms in, I can't eat mushrooms. But like yeah, say, you say, blending yeah. it in, I probably wouldn't actually know. But what else could you sort of put in other than physical fruit and veg? Do the supplements and stuff like that work? Look, that's a really good one. And you know, when it comes to the fundamentals of gut health, you don't need to worry about these expensive supplements. It's about fertilizing the good gut bacteria. So those super six plant-based food groups are really important. So you've got your whole grains, your nuts and your seeds, your herbs and your spices, your legumes, so the chickpeas, butter beans and stuff, your fruit and your veg. So people, if they're going, oh my God, I have no time to write that down, head over to the Gut Health Doctor website. There's a whole lot of free resources and have a look what you're missing from your diet out of those super six. A lot of people aren't getting in the legumes, which are really easy to sneak in if mm. your husband's not that keen. So what I do in the morning, I have uh, greens in the morning and I, I put it in with the water and shake it up. Would I be getting everything from that then? These supplements, you know, I would say probably not because oh. they're quite processed in that in that really? you know, in that blending process and therefore you're probably not going to get in as much as you think you are. So if you can go the whole fruits and whole veg, that's probably going to be best than having the kind of these refined powders. Right, OK. We'll have to chat after. Yeah, we'll have a little <laughs> chat, we'll have a little talk. Well, Lorraine, sorry we couldn't get through to you both, yeah. um, but we hope we've answered your question. Just sneak it in. Yeah. Simple as that. Shove it in, you won't know. <laughs> uh, next on the line, we've got Alison. Alison, uh, line two, are you there? Good morning, Lila. Good morning, Joseph. Good morning, Alison. Good morning, Alison. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Good, good thank good. you. Good. What would you like to ask, Megan? Um, well, I'm a crone sufferer. Um, and what I'd like to know is, what ha in what way could I change my diet to maintain a very healthy sort of everyday life? Alison, that's a great question. And you know what? A lot of people actually have Crohn's disease. So there is this my mom, category. She's, she's does got she? severe Crohn's disease. Right, yeah. She's yeah. had it for about 35 years now. Yeah. Exactly. So it's a type of inflammatory bowel disease. You've got your Crohn's disease. And the other typical one is ulcerative colitis. It affects about one in 100 people. So great question because I know a lot of people are really will be able to relate to this. And if we think of Crohn's disease, there's really two different kind of stages that you can be in. One is when you get a flare up, and that's where you get this quite severe inflammation really bad, painful symptoms. Some may even have blood in the toilet and things like that. And then you've got the other situation where you are called you're in remission. And that's when the inflammation has really come down. Now, the thing about Crohn's, you keep relapsing. So you go into a flare, then they bring you back down to remission, and then you keep going like that. So there's two different dietary strategies I recommend. If you're in a flare, then actually there's really good scientific evidence behind the specific type of, it's called enteral nutrition. So it's this liquid-only diet. So you need to talk to your doctor um, about that and whether it's right for you. But that's actually been shown to really help people get from the flare into remission. So talk to them about that enteral nutrition. And then once you actually are in re um, remission, there's really good evidence to help you know, maintain that via adding in extra plants. We were talking about the plants before, but it's this Mediterranean style of eating. Mm. So things like the legumes again, the oily fish, 
the fermented dairy, like the live yogurts, as well as all of those different types of plants. And people who have that sort of wholesome diet seem to have a lower risk of relapsing. In fact, our, our team at King's College in London were actually investigating some types of food additives as being a trigger for Crohn's. So try to limit some of those ultra-processed foods. Oh, we hope that helps, Alison. Is that helpful? Oh, that was brilliant. Thank you. Oh, Alison, thank it's a lot you. of trial and error as well. I know with my mum, she one thing that she can eat, some other things she says does her up and it just makes a bit... It is trial and error, but I know how bad it is, babe, so I hope you're all right. Oh, oh thank you. Send in love. Send in lots of Take love. Take care, Alison. Uh, right, we've got another one here. Sam, uh, why won't my bloating go away? Uh, Sam's had severe bloating for the last three years, but it doesn't seem to ever go away. I've previously been for a colonoscopy and was told everything is fine, which is great news. Um, I've tried healthy activities like yoga, taken probiotics, but it's got to a point where I sometimes cannot eat anything. Have you got Aww. any advice? Look, again, bloating is probably the most common digestive symptom. So a lot of people are suffering, but the fact that it's quite severe and, and enabling, uh, disabling her to you know, mm. enjoy her food, it's quite severe that we need to actually look into it a little bit further. Um, so great to hear the colonoscopy is all all okay because that's you know something that we need to rule out things like inflammatory bowel disease, also celiac disease. So we get that out of the way, and then we look at the other things. Now the yoga is a really good one for people who suffer with mm. bloating because it really relaxes that gut brain connection. Because if you're stressed up here, that can literally strangle your gut. So no matter what really? you eat, yeah, absolutely, you can trigger bloating. But mental health affects so much, yeah. like but physically. Like when it comes down, if you're stressing out, you've got anxiety and things like that, it can do all of that. I would never have thought that could do that mm. to you. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. the different locations, but there is amazing research that shows that these little bacteria are talking to your brain. So it's really impressive stuff in terms of mental health as mm. well. Um, so it's really important that I think everyone focuses on elements of their gut health. Um, but in terms of the bloating side of things, I would actually not necessarily recommend a probiotic or a prebiotic. So probiotics are those live bacteria. And then there's other P word, prebiotic. And these are types of these fiber supplements. And the reason for that is that they can add a whole lot of activity in your gut and trigger things like bloating. So actually some people, when they're going through really bad bloating, like it sounds like in this case, you need to reduce down the prebiotics, which are normally quite healthy for you. So things like your lentils and your chickpeas and garlic onion, but actually you need to give your gut a little bit of a rest. Right. Again, um, if you head over to our doctor website, you can see a step-by-step -step guide if you need that mm. further support of the types of food you might want to reduce down a little bit. And it can be quite painful as well, can't it, bloating? What do you recommend for the pain? Or... Exactly, yeah. So there is some really good um, therapies out there, like peppermint oil capsules can help with the short-term pain, as well as a heat pack. Applying that um, can really help draw more blood into the, into the gut and therefore help kind of smooth down that digestion. And also with the no eating, as well, I know you were talking about sup food supplements as well, and you were talking about uh, like uh, milkshakes and things like that. If you're not wanting to eat and stuff like that, would you say it's a good idea to maybe take like a an ensure or a protein drink yeah. or something like that, just so you're not a losing starving. too much yeah, sugar, exactly. salt? That's a really good point. It's important, I think, when bloating is one of the key symptoms, is that you do start to have smaller, more frequent meals. I probably wouldn't recommend unless I had that one-on-one -on -one consultation to, to kind of cut down just to liquids only. But I would say, instead of having, you know, a big breakfast, literally cut it into two and make sure you have at least a three-hour gap between each of those meals mm. because your gut's quite inflamed. So you want to give it just small amounts of food and that kind of titrates over time and it allows your gut to kind of heal itself. So small, frequent meals is much better than having three big meals if you are struggling with bloating. Mm. Lovely. Um, thank you. Um, next, we've got uh, Ellie. Now, is my acne being caused by my gut health? Uh, I want to know if acne can um, be caused by gut health issues and what advice would you give to help this? And I've suffered with acne for years and I've previously taken... Right, Acutane. Roaccutane, well done, Ryland, thank God you're here, mm. um, to clear it up. However, in the last few months, it has come back and I have read that it can be related to gut issues, especially mm. the skin around my cheeks. Any help would be appreciated as yeah, I'm really that's suffering. Awesome. It's a really fascinating area. There is, again, like the gut-brain connection, there is this two-way communication between our gut and our skin. And in fact, we've got trillions of bacteria in our gut. We have billions of bacteria on our skin. And these bacteria on our skin are actually one of the key triggers for acne. And that's why one of the first-line therapies, if you go see a doctor, may actually be an antibiotic or topical antibiotics, because it's the bacteria. 
However, when it comes to targeting these types of bacteria that's triggering the acne on your face, there's not a whole lot of research that suggests focusing on the gut bacteria right. is really going to help. So there is some really promising research suggesting in the next couple of years, topical probiotics, those live bacteria, may actually be the solution. Um, but what I would say is, why not get on top of your digestive symptoms? So, you know, there are some people in my clinic that I do see who are having these digestive upsets. We fix that, and then actually they notice that their skin does clear a little what bit. What we say about drinking water and stuff like that for the skin? Yeah. sleep. And also, if you're having large amounts of things like skim milk, like dairy products, reducing that a little bit and seeing if that can help. Megan, thank you so thank much. You. Oh, I could thank talk you. to you all day. I'm fascinated. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what else should I put there? What, what, what do I do now? Should I, should I rub it? We're all right. <laughs> Just want to know. Uh, Megan, thanks so much for coming in, babe. Love you. See you. Uh, still to come.